ideology behind it and about environmental issues and health and human service issues, education issues, uh, and criminal justice and corrections issues. Uh, and it's my job to talk about the budget, which in the first year of each biennium is clearly the biggest uh, single or two pieces of legislation uh, that we deal with. And so um, this will take a little bit more than five minutes, but after that we'll have an opportunity for questions on anything that's going on um, in, the, in the State House. Um, I would summarize uh, the consequences of the budget as passed by the House um, three ways. And I think the first is that there is no doubt that the budget as we passed it will put the lives of many Granite Staters at risk. Um, and, and it's really it, it's really sad to stand here to be able to see that. And I, and, you know, I see some folks in the audience who will be, um, you know, personally affected by it or are in uh, jobs where uh, the services that you provide will be personally affected. Um, I would say that the second way that I would characterize the consequences of this budget is that it is clearly a job killer. You heard a little bit from Jim and a little bit actually from Jackie too about the job loss at UNH. And I'll talk a little bit later about some of the more extensive job loss, but this budget definitely is a job killer. And the third thing, because I also see some city officials here that is absolutely for certain about the consequences of this budget is that it will increase local property taxes. Um, and that will happen because of the pressure pushed down onto the local <coughs> communities because of public safety issues, because of education issues, because of health care issues. Um, and the current majority is saying, we're not going to downshift. We will cost shift, we're not going to downshift. Um, make no mistake about it, cost shifting is downshifting. And if they truly believed that this wasn't downshifting, then there really wouldn't have been the need to add the amendment, the so-called Kirk or one of the Kirk amendments, which would undo a 200-year-old statute that requires that the local welfare offices are the, the, the very lowest safety net. And um, that has been the place when all else fails that people would go um, that needed assistance. Um, it's been in our statutes, as I said, for a couple of hundred years. And in order to be able to safely say we're not downshifting, they just eliminated the law. Um, because then, of course, the local communities are not required anymore, never mind that they might want to care about their neighbors and uh, members that live in their community. They won't be required to by law. So about six months ago, um, I think most of us that were out were talking about the fact that New Hampshire is the safest state in the country. Um, unfortunately, I think there are a lot of things in this budget that will change that. Um, again, putting, the, putting women, children, and families at risk. Um, at risk in terms of public health, at risk in terms of public safety, at risk in terms of getting in your car and driving down um, a highway or across, let's say, the Memorial Bridge. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, this budget cuts a couple dozen state troopers, it makes cuts to the Detective Bureau and the Crime Lab. That would be the Crime Lab that helps people to, the troopers and other state enforcement to be able to identify the people that committed the crimes and put them in jail. Um, somebody mentioned, Laura mentioned, the cuts to domestic violence. This will have a direct impact on local property taxes because one of the um, toughest issues for local law enforcement is domestic violence. And this will directly impact programs that are available for those that uh, are suffering from domestic violence. Um, somebody mentioned the CHINS program, Children in Need of Services. This program will be totally eliminated in this budget. And so children who are in, who are at risk themselves or are living in families that are at risk uh, will not receive the services that they need or they will receive them someplace else at, let's say, the local property taxpayer's expense. Um, and when those services are provided for these kids, they tend to um, do better. They end up not 
entering into the correction system. They end up not ending up in jail. Again, without these services, the stress in the education in our public schools will be higher. The um, court costs and the jail costs and corrections costs will be higher because we, you know, we're cutting early intervention services. Um, drug and alcohol prevention and treatment funds for 25,000 New Hampshire uh, citizens will be cut. And we know that not only will that mean that those that receive those services um, be at loss without those services, but there will be a lot more stress on their family. If they have kids or if they are kids, that means more stress again in our public schools. Um, it will mean that their employers will have productivity problems and issues at work. And uh, this is clearly not a good thing. Um, consumer protection, another public safety issue. Uh, if, as this budget would do, the Consumer Protection Bureau is totally eliminated, then the thousands of people that turn to the New Hampshire Consumer Protection Bureau will have nowhere else to go. Um, and we'll have more issues like FRM, the uh, Ponzi scheme um, that we had here in New Hampshire. And when you think about the kinds of things, consumer protection issues, we have what are called uh, weights and measures inspectors. Um, this is something probably most of us don't even know, have no idea that we would be affected by it, but there actually are inspectors that go out and check the, the gas pumps to make sure that you're really getting five, dollars, uh, five gallons of gas if that's what you've paid for. Um, or if you go to the grocery store that you're really getting a pound of vegetables if that's what you paid for. Um, and this would eliminate all of the weights and measures inspectors and I just saw a look that said, well, then what happens? Well, what the, this budget presumes is that those that manufacture and install these scales and measuring devices will check themselves to make sure that they work. And so the, you, you've also seen, I think, in the, in the Herald has done a couple articles about the fact that we're eliminating the inspector for pools and spas. So swim at your own risk, whether it's at the city pool or, um, or any commercial or public uh, pool or spa. Um, and, and you've also heard about the shellfish, so don't eat any shellfish if this budget goes through because there won't be anybody that will be inspecting there either. So while we have been, for the last few years, rated as the safest state in the country, I think that a lot of things that are in this budget will clearly impact our public safety, our public health, and, um, and, and, and our road safety um, as well. Um, six months ago, we were all talking about the fact that New Hampshire is one of the best educated states in the country. And uh, Jackie talked a little bit about some of the cuts to UNH, half of the state budget, half of the state funds that are uh, given to the university system will be cut. A third of the funds that go to the community college system will be cut. Last night, I don't know if you heard on NPR, but Paul Holloway, who sits on the community college system um, advisory committee, uh, really was talking about how devastating those losses will be. Because not only do many people choose to go to community college here for the first couple of years, because it's less expensive and then they can transfer to UNH. But in this particular economic climate, people are going to the community colleges <coughs> to get new skills, to improve their skills or change careers because of the economy. And today, versus just a few years ago, the community college system is serving 4,000 more students than they did just four years ago. And we have cut the funds that we are giving to um, the community college system by a third. Um, the vo vo uh, vocational technical programs, where many students get, high school students get skills, we're cutting a million dollars from that that goes to tuition and transportation because as you know they're regional, or you may know, they're regional schools. And so you need to get the students from the other districts there. That million dollars though, will no longer draw the $6 million federal grant match that 
that goes along with it. So the uh, career vocational schools will be losing a total of seven million dollars. Um, and the combination between UNH uh, eliminating the dropout prevention programs, the community uh, college system, and the high school go tech schools will absolutely put a damper on the highly skilled workforce that we have. And you know what? In New Hampshire, that is what we have. We have a highly skilled workforce. Businesses that move to New Hampshire say that the number one reason that they move to New Hampshire is because of our highly skilled workforce. So what will happen to that highly skilled workforce if we're cutting all of these educational programs?